Welcome back, everyone, to the 0K August 2021 v1 tournament, and we are into round three, being played on Frosty Cove, and we're going to be starting out with Gold Spaghetti and Saniac, who are players we haven't seen yet. Saniac, probably the stronger player of the two, but that will be for the game to decide, so let's get right to it. So, right off the bat, Gold Spaghetti goes for Jump Bots, Saniac for Shields, and this is a map where, you know, both, both kind of work. Yeah, those can both, both do their thing, and what the heck? Sorry, hang on a sec. A bit of a weird thing going on here. Uh, it's... Alright. Sorry about that. Alright. Back to the game. So yeah, this is a map where both of those factors can work. I can see why I'd use jump bots, just because there are quite a few cliffs here. Though I'll be interested to see if Gold Spaghetti is planning on just playing a micro-heavy playstyle. Because that is what jump bots get you. A lot of power if you're able to micro the units well. Though if you're not able to micro the units well, then you kind of die. Because they're expensive units that can't really be everywhere on the map at once. No, so far, Saniac just scouting out a little bit, not really doing a whole lot of damage, but of course, early, early game. So how that plays out will obviously change pretty quickly, depending on how the players actually go about this. So, you know, I expect we'll be seeing some differences in the way this game plays out over time, though admittedly, Gold Spaghetti does have a very strong opening economy and is doing a pretty decent job chaining. They're going to have some very strong overdrive Saniac certainly is going for a bit of overdrive chaining of their own, but nowhere near to the same degree. Of course, it's going to be a little bit risky for Gold Spaghetti if they're not defending this. And so far, they aren't. They actually have no static defenses whatsoever. Granted, it's not like there's going to be anything easily dropping in. Like, there's only a couple paths that can be taken to get back here. And if that happens, well, it's probably too late anyway. I mean, we have a Lotus up in the front. Just to double check, though admittedly we could get an assault over to the south and over to the side from there, but that's not happening. See, neither player really going for it. Saniac looking to posture some near the river. Not actually pushing out significantly. Gold Spaghetti looking to find some sort of entrance point. Three Pyros is enough to take this out. Okay, three, three Pyros could easily come in here, do some damage, and jump away and be fine. Although I expect they're probably going to jump in instead. Nope, they're jumping away. They're they're keeping their jump... No, never mind, they're jumping in. They're going for it. Py three Pyros coming in here. Moment of truth. And Gold Spaghetti managing to deal a fair bit of damage, but unfortunately not enough. <laughs> this is... I think he kind of wanted to keep the Pyros jumpable to get out of there. Jumping in was honestly overcommitting considering the circumstances. And that is a huge win for Saniac. They now have all this reclaim to work with. I mean, let's see, they have yeah, 500 metal. Early this early in the game, 500 metal is huge. I mean, that's an extra minute where they have a 33% metal advantage compared to their opponent. Gold's Pagay might have just thrown away the game. But I will say they do have better use of their metal. Saniac, they don't have enough caretakers that are actually assisting construction of the factories, and they don't have enough energy infrastructure to actually use all the metal they have. Gold Spaghetti, on the other hand, has both. Or, okay, wind dependently, but they generally, on average, have both. Not to mention the caretakers to actually use the metal they have. So Gold Spaghetti should be okay. Saniac, on the other hand... They are running into excess issues. A few rogues have been built up, but Gold Spaghetti has taken advantage of this tempo opportunity to expand basically over to the entire south side of the map. It's all theirs. It's a bit of a risky expansion, but again, this is a tempo play. Gold Spaghetti knows that Sania can't really do a lot of damage in the moment, so just go for it. Again, there's Gold Spaghetti going in for that jump. I do not agree with that, though... In this case, five powers might be enough to simply overpower the force. Got rid of the outlaw, which is huge. 
Rogue's still up, but hey, forcing the retreat is a good play regardless. Getting into the regroup. Gold Spaghetti. Trying to find some position to get back in here. Forcing the convicts back. And that does mean the Gold Spaghetti can more easily maintain control over the southwest side of the map. And that's key. Because Gold Spaghetti, again, they did donate a lot of metal to Saniac, and Saniac is taking full advantage of that. So if Gold Spaghetti can tear apart some of Saniac's expansion and just generally out-expand them, then there's going to be an easier time for Gold Spaghetti to get back, or get into this game in a significant way. Right now, it's, I'd say, even... No one really has a major advantage. Saniac's reclaim has been coming in handy. Gold Spaghetti, on the other hand, doing some pretty good work when it comes to harassment. Unfortunately, not paying close enough attention to the Pyros. Saniac not really feeling threatened by their command or in their commander. And now they're getting a large and larger shield ball with no real force to deal with it. We are swinging switch over to moderators. Which will be able to tear apart the shields fairly easily. So it's a good combo. Moderator and Pyro. Moderator takes out the shields. The Pyro can come in afterwards just to finish things off. At the same time, Gold Spaghetti expanding into Saniac's base. Or Saniac's side of the map. Not really their base. It's obviously off of the side. But still, Saniac should have control over the north side of the map. And they currently don't. Gold Spaghetti has basically taken all of it from them. The Saniac... So far, actually kind of falling behind. Gold Spaghetti... Was not expecting this much of a challenge, but... They... I should, should say... Gold Spaghetti was not expect. I was not expecting Gold Spaghetti to put up this much of a challenge. Saniac is an extremely strong player. But Gold Spaghetti is really showing what they can... T like, honestly, we haven't seen a lot of Jump Bot recently. It's kind of an out of meta. Especially Mass Pyro. So I kind of feel like this is a bit of an outside context problem for Saniac. They're dealing with it remarkably well considering, but they are taking a lot of damage in the meantime. They already just lost one of their squads. Granted, they took out one of Gold Spaghetti's. So now the tempo advantage is definitely in Saniac's favor. Looking to use that to approach, deal some raiding damage. Possibly take some of this Southwest expansion as well. Basically take revenge off what Gold Spaghetti took from them. Gold Spaghetti also cannot defend this area over to the side were to be attacked. And their forces are basically held up trying to hold back everything Saniac's building. Saniac's just getting more and more felons. Now that being said, Shieldbot is definitely a factory that builds up over time. So for now... Saniac's still okay. Sorry, Gold Spaghetti's still okay. Saniac's having a bit of a hard time, is what I meant to say. Saniac's having a bit of a hard time because their factory... Their, sorry, their, their army is not in the position it needs to be in to really deal significant damage. Gold Spaghetti can operate with a bit of a smaller army, like less of a ball, than Saniac. But that, of course, will only last for so long... Because Saniac does still have 50 metal per second going into their factory. They are still building up a shield ball one way or the other. And while it's being defended against reasonably well over to the south side of the map, it's only going to be so effective if this force goes down. Is that... No, the moderators will stop it. Actually, it will only be so effective if Saniac decides to throw these forces away. That is a metal donation. That is a reasonably large metal donation at that. What are we looking at here? 300 metal. I mean, we're later in the game, so it's not as big of a deal. But still, 300 metal is not nothing. Of course, that also opened things up for this small shield ball coming along the side. Of course, with the moderators already in position, it's not going to last too long. Ultimately, Gold Spaghetti is just having a very difficult time maintaining pressure. But at the same time, they are defending their base no problem. Actually, we have a lot of ro a lot of snitches. 
great many snitches right here. I don't quite understand the logic. I don't agree with this at all. We are seeing a gunship switch into Nimbus, which I don't see either. The moderators will be able to deal with that. Oh! And that's why I was wondering why build all those snitches. All that did was bury a hole, costing well in excess of 3,000 metal. I did not expect that much explosion, but that... That was a lot of explosion. Now the moderator... Wait. Can moderators not shoot up? I don't know if... Mo I think moderators might not be able to shoot up. Well, regardless... Toads are a thing, and they are very strong anti-air units, so the Nimbuses won't be able to last too long. But still, that was a lot of metal that was just turned into a giant hole. I mean, I guess the idea was, you know, use the snitches to make it very difficult for Gold Spaghetti to maneuver, break their forces apart, and then work from there, but that was, like, you know, 20 snitches just in a box. Ready to go, ready to blow. I don't understand the logic. Spreading them out would have made some sense, but... I don't know what Saniac was paying attention to at the time. I, I didn't check. At any rate, Nimbus coming in here. Actually managing to push back a fair bit. The Toad's able to defend reasonably well, but Nimbus's, Nimbus's are hardy units. They can easily retreat, get repaired, come back stronger, and you know, building up a large force of Nimbus's is a very good thing to do. Certainly put Saniac back into the game. Nothing else, it's opened them up to get this reclaim, which has been amazingly profitable. Still an awkward position for them, but hey, reclaim is reclaim. Never, never sleep on it. Gold Spaghetti's commander being heavily attacked by their Nimbuses. Why are you not jumping out of there? Get out of there. Get out of there. No, it's... it might be too late. Nimbus trying its best. Okay, no, the moderators can shoot up. I thought I thought. As one slowed Nimbus cannot get out of there in time. Nicely done, moderator. Opening that one Nimbus up to death. Second Nimbus goes down, thanks to the moderator once again. So, Gold Spaghetti holding on beautifully. Granted, they're losing the western side of the map, but Saniac still kind of falling behind when it comes to economy, and they lost a lot of Nimbuses. I mean, attrition-wise, Gold Spaghetti is ahead by 3,000 metal. Setting up a bit of a siege over the eastern side of the map. Their commander is still alive, though in desperate need of repairs. And moderators are in position to help deal with this shield ball coming in. And again, Saniac has not built a big enough shield ball to deal significant damage. I mean, if these two, if the two shield balls they have were to come together, they might be able to actually take this game. But so far, their army is split, and Gold Spaghetti is taking full advantage of that. And Pyro's coming in here, burning everything out. The moderator's just making the shields basically worthless. And, you know, why not? Throw in the Firewalkers for good measure. Just to finish off burning up these forces. Same time, the Assault Force over in the southwest, getting place held... Getting torn apart by moderators, and the Nimbus cannot save them. Seniac once again losing another army thanks to just awkward splitting of forces. It's really what it's coming down to. Seniac actually has a really strong position economically. They just need to have their forces all bunched up in one little ball, and they're not doing that. The Gold Spaghetti doesn't even have to try to divide and conquer. It's being divided for them. Which is an amazing position to be in. That being said, Gold Spaghetti is still now relying on Reclaim at the center of the map in order to stay alive. So if the center of the map gets taken from them, they will be in trouble. But that's not where Saniac is focusing. Saniac wants to get this western side. They want to take it, and they're not getting it. Where are the constables? There's the constable. Arresting these shield bots. These rogues. These convicts. Making it impossible for them to do any real damage. 
Corsaniac not really in a position to deal a lot of damage back. I'm a bit surprised we aren't seeing any jacks come out. Maybe Saniac's not really in a confident position that they can actually get through this. I mean, the moderators have been doing a fine job. I just would think, you know, jacks coming through here would allow for a really nice bit of base assault, especially as these shield balls are being torn to pieces. Again, at great efficiency in favor of Gold Spaghetti. Alright. Another shield ball gets turned into a reclaim field, which again is under Gold Spaghetti's control. A couple more Nimbus is trying to come in, but they're just simply not going to be able to do the trick. And the Constables, they'll be fine. Moving back. Going in for reclaim afterwards, but there's not a whole lot that Saniac's going to get out of this, and Gold Spaghetti is just getting richer and richer. The Saniac, they've gone over, setting up a Juggernaut. Interesting choice. I do not agree with this. There are so many moderators and placeholders already here. The Juggernaut has been pre-countered. Like, honestly, I think a Firewalker would be a better option to help get rid of the moderators, if you're going to go for jump bots. Or... No, not Jax. Oh, well, maybe Jax. Maybe Jax, actually. Jax wouldn't be a bad idea if you're going to go for a jump bot switch. But Juggernaut? I don't know. That's just... No, Jax wouldn't be great either. Yeah, I don't know. Gold Speed has got a pretty solid force. Firewalker is the only one thing that comes to mind as a real option. Oops. And that being said, Saniac is getting a reasonably strong economic position over to the western side of the map. So they have at least something to their name, but it's it's proving slow going. Gold Spaghetti. How are you going to do this? How are you going to take this out? Because so far it is looking like a stalemate. Neither player really setting up anything to break through. The Juggernaut is trying to come in. But again, the forces to deal with this already exist. The only thing I can think of is overwhelming them. Just throw in enough stuff that the moderator simply cannot reload quickly enough to deal with the Juggernaut while also dealing with the Shield Ball. That is an option. But again, the placeholders are more what I'm thinking of. Ooh, that being said, there it comes. Juggernaut's in here. The placeholders did their job. But the Firewalkers are more importantly in that awkward position. This Juggalant might actually work better than I expected. And their jump is just about ready. There it is. I don't think I can jump. I can't jump while place health. Moderators once again coming back here. And there's another placeholder shot. And that, that is where I see the Juggalant dying. However, that has opened things up. The western side of the map is... Gradually getting torn apart. Saniac able to crack that open, but at the same time, Gold Spaghetti just ripping apart the Northeast. Doesn't even care. Sending the forces over to the Northeast. Nice little strike team that completely wrecks Saniac's economy. So while this Juggernaut is dealing some damage, it simply isn't enough. Saniac, like I said, already... But, uh, Saniac, like I said, was running into a counter. Gold Spaghetti had that set up. They weren't going to have any problems dealing with this, and indeed, they didn't. Saniac's commander coming in here, honestly, rather unwisely. It will survive for now, but that Juggernaut did not. Ah, oh, so much reclaim, so much metal donated over to Gold Spaghetti. And they have really held on this match. But like I said, the Juggernaut didn't really make sense to me. I... Uh, I don't know. I could sort of see it coming through with some assistance. And there is a second Juggernaut. Along with an Iris. So Cloak's Juggernaut is a thing that's going to happen. There's Juggernaut coming in here from Gold Spaghetti. Which I honestly agree with more. Because, again, against a Shield Ball, that makes a lot of sense to me. It's a Shield Ball. What else is it going to do? Although now we have Juggernauts that are trying to tread water, so, so much for that. But yeah, I mean, what what is going to happen? 
really, when it comes down to it, is that Gold Spaghetti's use of a juggernaut just makes a lot more sense given the circumstances. And they have a better economy. And they have the reclaim field. While Juggernaut is coming in here, doing a fair bit of damage, is it being pushed into the water? It's being pushed into the water. Yes, it is being pushed into the water. It's going to have a hell of a time getting out of there. Actually, it might be okay. I don't know, it's kind of stuck. The second Juggernaut... Yeah, it is stuck in the lake. And a bunch of snitches actually do deal the significant damage. So it wasn't a complete wash. The Insaniac's Juggernaut is not going to be able to do a whole lot of damage. Give me another reclaim field, but the Southwest has been opened up. Gold Spaghetti, however, still has the attrition advantage by 10,000 metal. These snitches are simply not really doing enough on their own. Although there's another shot at them. There they come. Gets rid of another fairly large force of moderators and placeholders. Firewalkers remain intact, but that was a nice shot. Yeah, 1,000 metal of attrition swing over. Saniac's still behind by about 10,000, but it's remaining stable, if nothing else. Oof. That is unfortunate. Revenant trying to come in here, the submerged Juggernaut. Are we we're gonna get a little terraform here? The juggernauts, they're, they're kinda. Little help! <laughs> they're kinda stuck. It's one thing about this map, uh, is just the sheer amount of damage you can deal, like how soft it is. Especially, well, okay, the center is just close to the water. I think the whole map is equally soft, but the center being so close to the water. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. As the Juggernaut has found out. Granted, that lake exists when the map starts, before any of the damage is done. But still, you know, it's a, it's a position that can be difficult to play from. That being said, Saniac still now 11,000 behind in attrition. Just trying to find that game-ending tool. Cyclops is what Gold Spaghetti has decided to go for. And a Strider Hub is where Saniac is investing their resources. Already have the one, but they haven't used it to actually build anything strider -y yet. I mean, again, it's just hard to get in with a heavy unit. I could see maybe a Scorpion doing okay. Because it can cloak and get in close and then deal a bunch of damage. But honestly, the placeholders just make it really hard for any heavy unit to deal significant damage. Well, the Emissary is coming in as well for Gold Spaghetti. That additional artillery is doing the trick. Just to hold back the shield bots, but this is still not really finding any movement. Like, where that big attack from Gold Spaghetti came in has been rebuilt. Saniac's completely taken everything there. Granted, the Cyclops is going to try, but no, it doesn't matter. Saniac sees the Cyclops, decides it's not going to happen, and throws in the towel. I was saying, metal use is about the same. It really just came down to attrition. Cool. 20,000 metal army compared to like 2,000. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that was placeholder, which, granted, is an extremely strong unit for force multiplication, but is not itself a damaging unit. But, no, not, not that much. That was... That was all attrition. Like, that really was, if you look at the numbers, that army value advantage is just mirrored in the attrition stats. So nicely done by Gold Spaghetti, just keeping their units alive. Again, it's just Saniac never really balled up their shield ball, and Gold Spaghetti had the moderators and placeholders and everything to stop it. I mean, even if the ball had happened, it still would have been a tough situation with the placeholders. Like, shield in a jump pot is a tricky matchup late game. Anyway, I believe that is it for round two. Let's see... No, round four, three, rather. No, apparently we have a couple more matches that might be ongoing. I don't know. Let's see. Well, yeah, there are still a few matches that are run... That are just cleaning up. Eh...
I want to say I can't imagine they take that long, but they might. I don't know. I need to get some water anyway. So we're just going to call it for now. We'll be back with round four in a few minutes. Zai, I need to get myself some water. Stay tuned.